He was the prized toy in the Christmas stocking that morning. Holding a sprig of holly between its paws, why, the rabbit was the cherished toy of the boy. Stuck in the Christmas stocking with oranges and nuts and other small toys, why, the boy loved the rabbit for, well, for a whole two hours. And then the aunts and uncles arrived with other presents that needed to be opened, and why, those gifts became the prized the prized toys after that, along with the dinner that needed to be eaten. And so the velveteen rabbit became just another one of the many toys lying in the nursery alongside the skin horse. And one day, one day, the rabbit asked the skin horse, what is real? Is it something that sticks outside of you? or something that buzzes inside? Ah, the skin horse replied, real isn't, isn't how you are made. It's something that happens to you. You become real. Does it hurt? Asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, because the skin horse was always, always truthful. But once you become real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up like a toy, or does it happen bit by bit? Asked the rabbit. And the skin horse replied, becoming real takes a very, very long time. Usually by the time you become real, all your hair has been rubbed off, and you get shabby, and loose in the joints. But it doesn't matter because once you are real, you can never be ugly. Because real, the skin horse said to the rabbit, is something that happens to you. Like being loved by a child, not just to be played with, but being loved for a very, very long time. Once you become real, you can never be ugly. What is real? Real is the opportunity that you and I are given on the second Sunday of Advent to go with John the Baptist and to find him in the desert. Because, my friends, that's the only place that you and I will ever know realness. We have to go into the desert. Why do we have to go there? Well, because it is there that we can do what John the Baptist invites us to do. The very first word of his proclamation out of his mouth to all those coming out into the desert is one word, and that word is repent. To repent. What does that mean? To repent means that you and I take the opportunity, why we take the opportunity to go away from the crowd. Repent begins by our willingness to go away from the crowd. You see, that's why the church on this second Sunday of Advent gives us not the mountain like we heard of last Sunday, but the church in her wisdom gives to us the desert. We have to go there because we all have to spend some time in solitude. How else will you and I know what lies in the depths of our heart? If we never know solitude, if we never embrace silence, if we never have a time away from the crowd in the desert, we will only live a one-sided, or we will only be a one-sided creation. And that means that we will only well, we will only believe ourselves to be what other people think we are, what other people have come to know we are, what other people say we are. We become a one-sided creation if we never go into the desert, if we never encounter solitude, if we never experience silence. 
Because it is in the desert, away from the crowd, that we can hear the other voice, the voice that speaks from within, the voice that lies deep in the depths of our heart, as the prophet Isaiah tells us, it is the voice of a child. Because the little child, Isaiah tells us, in today's first reading, in that beautiful vision that he gives to us of what the kingdom can be like, the kingdom of justice, why Isaiah tells us it's the little child that will guide us. It's the little child and that voice that speaks within the depths of our heart that says to us that repentance means that we have to realize, like, like John tells the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that we shouldn't go into the desert, we shouldn't desire to repent quite simply out of fear for, well, fear of ourselves of what might happen to us. You brood of vipers, John says to the Pharisees and Sadducees, who told you to flee from the coming wrath of God? What John the Baptist was telling those Pharisees and Sadducees and you and I is don't go into the desert simply because you're trying to protect yourself. You got to go into the desert because you need to hear the voice of the child that dwells within your heart. You can't go into the desert half-hearted. You got to go into the desert with an open heart. And then the other part of repentance is not being, not being deceptive and thinking that somehow we, by the, by the very merit of who we are as sons and daughters of God, that somehow we don't have to go through this pain and the hurt of that happens with repentance. Notice how John the Baptist says, and don't just assume because you're a son or daughter of Abraham that somehow you are, well, you are privileged. No, you have to go through this desert experience. And that's what Advent invites us to do. The desert is a lonely place. The desert is barren. The desert oftentimes is without life, or at least that's how it appears once we first go there. But the desert is also beautiful. It is a place away from the crowd, away from all the voices that seem to know who we are and what it is we need to be about and what it is that we need to be doing. Yes, the desert is a place away from all of that, and it's a place that invites you and I to encounter the gift of solitude and silence. And I pray that these days of craziness that we call preparation for Christmas might afford you and I, even, even if it's a brief moment of solitude and silence, that we might not run away from it, but rather we might embrace it. So that we might hear the voice of a little child who recognizes that we are real and that bit by bit we are becoming who God wants us to become. Does it hurt? Absolutely. Sometimes it does because God is always truthful. But he invites us today to why to understand that to be real is to be loved. And to be real means we can never be ugly. To be real means that we are being led by a little child.